I'm here at the Unity headquarters in Lund, Sweden with CEO Lewis Horn. I'm so fortunate that you have a few minutes to talk to me about this beautiful car that I got to sit in. Oh, um, I guess the first question is, because if I didn't get any other question, I have to ask this when our viewers want to know, yeah. is there any chance that this car could ever come to the United States? Yeah, uh, definitely. I think uh, sooner than we expected. I mm -hmm. think it's possible to have uh, this car there already by next year um, at a low volume. So. That's kind of exciting. It's so definitely by 2020, but quite likely by next year. Uh, to be fair, this is not a production car. It's an a aspirational car, but it'll look and feel exactly like this. So. Now, I'm on the list for the car. I'm a Unity investor. Is there any chance that I, Jesse and I could be one of the first people to get the Unity car in the US? You can just... It, I think it sounds fair, actually. Sounds fair. Did you hear that? I got it on film. <laughs> Wow, because I, I can just only imagine this coming out of the back of the Tesla Semi, uh, showing it off to everyone in the US who's super excited about it. I know everyone in Europe is excited about it, yeah. but I think this would be a, an awesome car in the US. In a dramatic twist, this is not uh, confirmed yet, but it might be that we actually launched it, uh, it in the US. So unveil the production car over there, but as I said, it's not confirmed yet. I gotta ask you, one, one of the things that excited Jesse and I about your company, we get emailed all the time about new companies, but when we heard about you guys, there was this excitement that came through your videos about you and your vision that I had never seen before. You, in my opinion, really get it. Thanks. I mean, are you inspired by Elon Musk? Are you inspired? Who, who inspired you to do this? That obviously Elon Musk was a huge inspiration to, I think, a lot of a lot of stuff I do. That's going to be the most inspirational person alive today, doesn't it? So I think probably a lot of people are the same. Now, uh, when I was at an event, I had a chance to shake Elon Musk's hand, and I pulled my hand back. Don't know why. But now I'm thinking I would love for your hand to be the first that I shake of an electric car company CEO. I am just so excited about this car and about your vision. This car is an affordable car. It has so many cool features. I guess one of the ones I like the best is the removable battery. Can you tell me how you got the inspiration for that idea? Um, well, obviously range anxiety is a big deal. Um, with the gasoline car, you can just put in more gasoline. Um, what we wanted to do was build a car that was suitable for the infrastructure as it stands today and especially in places like uh, people that live in apartments or, or places like sort of certain developing countries and so forth. And we figured if there was a way to have an auxiliary battery pack that you could charge around it would reduce some of the range anxiety because if we see for example the community vibe that Tesla's created around their car um, and we have indicators now that, that makes us think we can also create a good community vibe. And if that community could be helping each other out or give each other a little peace of mind, uh, we also were planning to put bi-directional charging on there as well. So each car itself could be a, a mobile charging station. So you could charge at home and then make a little charge available if someone else needs it. So just try to design for the real problems that exist today. So find out what are the barriers the psychological barriers and can we design something that solves them. Wow, that's, again, that's why I'm so inspired by you because I've n never heard another car company even talk about that as a, a thing, but it's such a necessary thing. Yeah, for sure. And that's the role of a startup, I think, to come in with something new and different, challenge the, the, the norms and hopefully make a much more sustainable car economically viable for the big guys to come and compete with so that we can really move the needle a little bit here. Just like what Tesla did, you know? The other guys could have made electric cars for a long time, but now Tesla forces them to, and that's also inspiring. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna write on this wall, don't tell the CEO. I'm dead. Yeah? If you're gonna deface public property, you probably shouldn't do it. Oh, know. it's the, the CEO. CEO. Hi, I wasn't gonna <laughs> write on your wall. <laughs> Go for it, I, I, I wrote this on the wall anyway. Why did you write this on your wall? Um. It's in our last office, it started there. Um, basically, there was one day, it was a really tough day, and I was really beaten up, and everyone was a bit beaten up. This is a pretty hard challenge at times. Yeah. And at that time, I was just, I don't know, given some passionate speech or something. And I remember saying, damn it, I want to I wanna make history. So then, uh, for some reason, impulsively, I just grabbed this pen and wrote on the wall, I want to make history. Bam. Nice. And then people just started signing on it. 
and then uh, we got to the new place. That, uh, Albert and Isaac did an episode where they painted over it. We moved to the new place, mm-hmm. and they said, "Well, what are you going to write here?" And then so yeah, we just grabbed I uh, grabbed a can and wrote, "I, I want, want some to change the future." <laughs> Uh, so it's a little more forward thinking because mm-hmm. I feel like we already created a piece of history there. You did, yeah. And then uh, the the engineers, because we refurbished this place ourselves, when I finished uh, writing it, they were standing right there going, Do we dis- are we part? Are we just painted that wall. <laughs> We just pulled into a parking lot here. It was packed, um, hard to get into. I thought to myself, if this parking lot was full of these cars, you could fit a lot more people in here. Um, where does this car fit in with the, say, average family that you know one person has to drive a long way? Does, is this a second car? Yeah, so this is designed for a second family car or the ideal commuter car or maybe the first car for somebody that wants an EV but just doesn't want several tons of machinery in their life it's, it's just a, a lot of hardware so yeah it's designed to be your commuter or your second family car that's the two-seater and then we plan to do a, like a four-seater or a five-seater but also compact uh, but they'll be primarily for mobility as a service so subscribing inner city travel or, or things like that can you talk to me about some of the innovation that's in this car now because i got into this car and i felt like i was in a spaceship um, it just has beautiful glass everywhere. The visibility is fantastic. And then I was to learn there aren't any planned pedals except for probably a mandatory brake pedal. Can you talk to me about those innovations and then like there's what a planned heads up display? So yeah, I think it's really important to set the right expectations here with your viewers. So this first vehicle was really an aspirational car and some of them features will take a couple of years to be able to release on the market. So. We design the ideal car and we work out which of these features and functions are mature enough to deliver in a production car. The basic principles, if you look at a dashboard today, it's just covered in buttons and levers and all that kind of stuff. We want to replace that hardware with software. Not only can we make it a more seamless, consistent experience that's a lot more intuitive, we reduce a lot of plastic out of the world, which is is never a bad thing. Uh, And we reduce a lot of cost out of the development and, and upgrade of the car. Uh, so we plan a heads-up display, as you said. I don't think we're going to have it polished enough for the production car at the end of this year, because that is a very challenging task to get that done on time. But effectively what it is, in the early stage of this company, when I said the research phase, we wanted to know if we're going to reinvent the electric car for modern usage patterns, modern problems, and the modern technologies, what are the technologies it should be based on? And one of them was Uh, You know, we could see where the puck was going with autonomous electric cars and so forth and different business models. And we thought if we can make a bigger space for optics for a heads-up display, you know, we we can achieve a lot of compelling safety navigation features and maybe in future something to do with business model. But I I hate the idea of using it to advertise stuff. (laughs) I don't like that at all. But a, a simple example in the short term, what people could expect in the short term, is like you know an, an arrow on the road that shows you where you're navigating to. Or, for example, in Sweden, a surprising amount of people die or are injured from hitting an elk on the side of the road just because they didn't see it. But the sensors of the car, of course, can see it. So if we can highlight that elk and make sure the perspective is correct, uh, we can sort of enhance the safety of the car. So co-pilot features or active safety features. So it just makes another big interface. Whereas in a, a normal car now, you have maybe a liter of space. We have up to 130 liters to use. Wow. I think we're gonna use about 70. Now talk to me about autonomy. Is that something you believe is gonna happen in the auto industry? I think it's inevitable, 100% inevitable. Uh, we spent the first couple of years doing a lot of autonomy development. So we had mule vehicles on the road, uh, driving around here. We have, we've done a lot of work in it, not because we want to develop autonomy software. There's people out there wildly better than us at it. Uh, What we want to do is understand what's possible, understand the sensor suites and so forth needed, make sure we design the architecture for that so it's autonomy ready, Mm -hmm. and then team up with the people that are already great at at building autonomous software. But but I say 100% that's inevitable. Our approach to autonomy right now, uh, if you focus on the usual use case, which is five executives in a big car driving through New York City in the rain and a girl with a ball runs on the road 
It's a very challenging task to overcome. Today, it's still a technological fantasy, to be honest, to do level five autonomy like that. But to solve problems like underutilization or to have uh, the car, if I'm subscribing to a car for my daily commute, to have that in the right place within 100 meters of me or so forth, perhaps driving on dedicated lanes or low risk, low congestion areas, it means we can solve a huge amount of problems that create financial efficiencies for people, huge environmental efficiencies for the planet, uh, and we can apply them technologies now to solve them problems now. Um, whether or not we get to level five in five or ten years, don't really know. We just set up the telematics and the sensors so that we could be a part of it if it happens. Yeah. All right, Jesse. I think he's, he's distracted. Yeah, he's distracted. He's okay. okay. already in. Hi! How you doing? This was hey, beautiful. What's up? This is really, really nice. Oh, nice car. Oh, this is a, a Twizzy. Wow, it's cool. You're using that like fluorescent stuff there. It's yeah. really cool. It's really spiffy. Oh, yeah. oh, what's that machine over there? Yeah, what's that machine? this earlier like the, the analysts love to tear things apart but who cares yeah. about three months yeah or, uh, but man there's so many people that say that oh it tells them all three problems I was saying okay where do you think the story is coming from right. there, uh, every 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 car company on earth has yes. problems in production exactly it's very hard right it's just that they're saying Tesla's, right. Tesla's saying yeah it's super hard as hell right um, and it, it makes a little drama dramaturgy Right. When that's uh, launched. How did you know that this was the thing you wanted to focus on? Why not one of your other earlier ideas? Like, how did you zero in on this? I consciously designed my life to attempt a grand challenge like this. Uh, I always did. So I, I did a lot of the other stuff just in preparation, just to learn every piece of the public, private, and academic, and so forth. So I really designed my life for a grand challenge. Uh, I don't know if it'll all work yet, but we're... we're we got a lot of good indicators that it might. I'm just, this is awesome to have a CEO of a company who's not trying to just spin everything and you're, you're just, you're saying that this is what it is. It's really hard to do and yeah, it might fail, but hey, we're going to try really hard. Yeah, because some people got to do that. If you see there's a need in the world, we've got to do it. We've got to try. Um, yeah, it looks nice, huh? It does the look so nice. Cool. <laughs> it took a long time to get that front like that. It was so many different... Uh, it was brutal designing this car and it has a long way to go you know we have to polish stuff up this angle won't be so sharp so you can open the door more uh, there's a lot more work to polish this up but it's a nice DNA it's a nice base yeah. it's really nice it's uh, it's it's splendid I'm trying to come up with a word that captures it I haven't come up with it yet have you been able to think of one word that captures it like pure pure electric car like it's uh, it's not trying to be any other car it's supposed to be a piece of consumer electronics like the macbook car mm -hmm. or the iphone car or something so maybe pure i don't know pure, pure is good pure is good it's not do very lofty but right. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you have a name set up for it yet or are you going to stick to you know a u and a number or do you um unity one one is a quite a big metaphor. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of references from the Apple one to a lot of other stuff. It also sim symbolizes that there's a future here, there's a series uh, coming. Um, and the other part of the answer is I really don't know. 
so <laughs> nice yeah we'll find out yeah to to be determined yeah <laughs> i can't wait to pull this out of the back of the semi truck and go spinning around and showing it off to people and getting them in the car because i think that is going to change a lot of minds thank you so much today for talking to me um i'm just so excited to be here with you and your fabulous team so thank you so much and uh, you've planted a great seed there this is going to be a repetitive vision and I, I think we're going to pull that one off nice i can't i can't wait to work with you guys at unity i'm so excited about this partnership thank you so much i really appreciate it ah, thanks. Wow. Check the turn. <laughs> <laughs> How much is it? <laughs> Doesn't work. It's not. He's not metric. Okay. Where's the sun? It's like a, so it's like a virtual cat model that you actually do. This is insane. The hands part is insane. Dude, watching your hands These is insane. These are not my hands. <laughs> go this way. I mean, as long as you don't bump into the seat, you can walk right through it. Okay. You yeah, you're, you're doing good. <laughs> I just want to show that you're not, you're, you're going around something that doesn't exist. This is the front of the car right here. There's a headlight. <laughs> Is this where we charge it? Uh huh. That's right. So this is a charging port. Yeah. And this is the windscreen. Beautiful windscreen. Yeah. All right. Head over to the other side. Okay. Viewers, we need we need some help coming up. I want one word that describes this car. It can't be cute. It can't be smart. It can't be sleek. It has to be one word that has all that together in it. Somebody out there can come up with a word for it. This is amazing. <laughs> wow. Now you know. <laughs>